Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another what's for dinner video. These are some of my favorite videos to share with you. So I'm glad you're here. I have five dinner recipe ideas for you in this video. So I hope that you stick around. My family and I are trying to uh, cut out a lot of our sugar and just overall eat like more complex carbs, uh, less white processed food, more protein, more veggies. Overall, we're just trying to eat a more healthful diet in the new year. I mentioned that in a previous video, which I can link down below, but I have some great ideas for you today. So I hope that you stick around. Let's get right into the recipes. Any recipes I have, I will link down below. So we are going to start out with some barbecue chicken and baked potatoes, and I'm gonna be sharing my coleslaw recipe. So for the potatoes, I just scrub them, I uh, pierce them with a knife, and then I like to roll them in a little bit of avocado or olive oil and sprinkle them with a bit of salt. It just makes the uh, skins a little bit more tasty. And then I put them on a baking tray, either lined with foil or parchment paper, and I'll pop those in the oven about 425 degrees for an hour. Next, I'm going to make my coleslaw. I'll link the recipe for this down below. If you're doing low carb or low sugar, this is a great recipe because you can use a sugar substitute. I'm using monk fruit sweetener and it tastes exactly the same. It's really, really good. So in my bowl, I have some mayo, some milk, and some buttermilk. I'm going to also squeeze some fresh lemon juice and add that to the bowl as well. And then some seasonings. So the monk fruit sweetener I was talking about and some salt and some pepper, and that's it. If you don't have butter, milk on hand you can just substitute a little bit more milk and lemon juice and it'll work out fine I have done that a lot so whisk that together and then I'm going to add some shredded carrots and some shredded cabbage you could totally shred the cabbage on your own but I'm taking some help from the store and using a bagged mix because I find that the pieces are more uniform and it's way less work for me so I'm gonna stir this up make sure that it's very well incorporated and get it into the refrigerator next I had some smoked chicken in the freezer I just pulled that out and put it on low in the crock pot all day, mixed a little bit of extra barbecue sauce into that so it wasn't dry. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about the coleslaw also is that you do want to make that ahead of time, uh, about an hour or two. So we had the barbecue chicken with the sugar-free coleslaw and a baked potato with sour cream. It was so, so good and everyone loved it. So today's What's For Dinner video is sponsored by Barilla. I am super excited to be working with them along with Boxed.com to bring you guys a great deal on some Barilla pasta. So if you haven't heard of Box.com, they are a website where you can buy in bulk and there is no membership required. So you can save time and uh, avoid the crowds. It's super convenient. Today I'm going to be featuring a recipe with Barilla's new red lentil pasta. It's only made with one simple ingredient and that is red lentils. I have the rotini and the penne shapes here. I'm going to be using the rotini to make a crock pot chicken marinara. The Barilla red lentil pasta is a great source of protein and it also is an excellent source of fiber. So if you're looking to uh, add some health conscious pasta to your diet in the new year, this is a great way to do so. It's also gluten-free, non-GMO verified, and it meets the standards that people have really come to expect from Italy's number one brand of pasta, which is Barilla. This pasta is so good and it does have that traditional al dente texture. So you could use it in a regular pasta dish or a pasta a salad or even a soup. So for this zesty chicken marinara, here are the ingredients you'll need. I'm using some Barilla pasta sauce along with some chicken breast, some Italian vinaigrette, fresh tomato, Italian seasoning, and some garlic. I placed four chicken breasts into the bottom of my slow cooker and seasoned those with salt and pepper. Next, I'm going to chop up this tomato and I'm going to mix up the jarred Barilla pasta sauce with a little bit of Italian vinaigrette and some seasonings and some fresh tomato which makes a really great healthy dinner and chicken marinara to top that uh, Barilla red lentil pasta with. So definitely you guys check out boxed.com. They have a ton of great healthy items in bulk. I've shopped with them before and always had a great experience. You can go to boxed.com and get $1 off the Barilla red lentil pasta. There is a coupon available, so get $1 off of Barilla red lentil pasta. I'll have all of the information in the description box below. 
below and you can go to boxed.com. So on top of the chicken, I'm pouring the marinara sauce mixture and I'm going to cook that on low for eight hours. You could also cook it on high for four hours. And here's what it looks like when it's done cooking. The chicken is super tender and cooked through and that delicious tomato sauce. The chicken just shreds apart when you eat it. It's so, so good. So I'm going to cook up my red lentil pasta. I just have a pot of boiling salted water here. I'm going to pour the pasta in and this cooks perfectly al dente in seven to nine minutes. I cooked mine for about eight minutes and it was perfect. Next, I'm going to make a salad to go with our dinner. So I'm going to mince up some red onion. I'm actually going to make some infused um, olive oil with this. It's kind of like a garlic and onion infused olive oil and I'm going to use that along with some balsamic vinegar to dress our salad. So I chopped up the red onion as thinly or as small <laughs> as possible and I'm using a quarter cup of that and putting it into a mason jar. Next, I'm going to add a quarter cup of olive oil and you won't use this whole batch of vinaigrette for one salad. It will make many salads. I'm also going to add some red wine vinegar, put that into the jar, and then some garlic powder and some oregano. This vinaigrette could also be used to marinate chicken or shrimp. I think that would be really good as well. I'm also going to add the garlic powder and then I'll just pop a lid on that and give it a good shake. That's my favorite way to make vinaigrette. Super easy and you don't have to dirty a bowl. So I have some salad greens in here that I just rinsed with cold water and I'm spinning those dry. Whenever you're making a salad, you just wanna make sure that you um, dress, or I'm sorry, that you dry <laughs> the uh, lettuce really well or the vinaigrette will not stick to the leaves, but I'm just kind of giving these a rough chop and putting them into my salad bowl. I really like doing the uh, sort of family style salads, having it in a big bowl and then having everyone serve themselves. I just think that it's so much more uh, family friendly and you can kind of put it at the table and if anyone's still hungry, they can grab more salad. So I'm also going to add some cherry tomatoes to this salad. You could use regular tomatoes, but this, this is what I had on hand. I had some red and yellow ones. So I'm just um, having these and putting them into uh, the salad. And next I'm going to add some cucumber. I diced this pretty finely and just layered it on top of the greens and the tomatoes. We really liked this salad. It was really good. I also added a few uh, tablespoons of crumbled feta cheese. And then next I'm just going to drizzle on some of that um, infused olive oil that I made with the red onion and the garlic. I just drizzled about two tablespoons over the salad. And then I'm also going to drizzle on about a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar and give that a good toss. And you guys, this is a delicious salad. I would definitely recommend it. I seasoned it with a little bit of extra salt and pepper, totally yummy and would definitely uh, recommend you guys recreating this. So I'm just gonna give this salad a toss to mix everything up. You wanna make sure that you don't make this too far ahead of time or it definitely will <laughs> get soggy. I don't know about you guys, but I am in for any salad that has uh, cherry tomatoes and feta cheese in it. So here is that red lentil pasta all cooked up. You can see that it's still firm. It's not mushy. It is perfect and delicious. So I'm just going to plate up my dinner with the chicken marinara. So I put the pasta on the bottom of the dish Dish. We have the chicken breast with the zesty marinara. I just put a tiny little bit of shredded mozzarella with some fresh parsley. We had the salad on the side. This was so good. I would definitely recommend it. You guys make sure that you check out Barilla on box.com. I'll have the link down below as well as a coupon code. Okay, so next up, I'm going to make some coconut shrimp in the air fryer. And with that, we had some sweet potato fries on the side. So this is a new recipe to me, this coconut shrimp and I would definitely recommend it. I'll show you guys how I made it. But right now I'm just cutting up my sweet potatoes. I did peel those off camera and for these, I just like to cut them in kind of as small of pieces as I can. Sweet potatoes can take a long time to roast in the oven. So if you cut them into thin strips, they will definitely uh, take a shorter amount of time, which is what I needed. I was kind of not wanting to cook dinner on this night, but I'm really glad that I did. Um, even Connor actually really liked the coconut shrimp. I'm actually gonna try it next time I make shrimp. I'm gonna 
to do popcorn shrimp in the air fryer. There's a recipe that I found that uses cassava flour. So I'll definitely film that and share it with you guys in a later what's for dinner video. Just make sure that when you're cutting sweet potatoes, you use a really sharp knife and be careful because they are very hard. And if you use a dull knife, you can definitely <laughs> hurt yourself. You can season sweet potato fries. I can't talk uh, with anything that you want. Sometimes I just use salt and pepper and garlic powder, but today I decided to use a steak seasoning that I had in my spice cabinet. So I just drizzled those with olive oil and I'm gonna sprinkle some of that steak seasoning over top. I put these on a parchment paper lined baking tray, spread them out and then pop them in the oven. I roasted these at 425 for probably about 20 to 25 minutes. Make sure that you check them halfway through and flip them over because they can uh, become burnt. Along with that, I did bake some chicken breast um, just for my kids in case they didn't want the shrimp. So for the coconut shrimp, I'm going to make an egg wash. I just have two eggs and I'm going to beat those until they're well combined. I am using some coconut flour for the breading. So I'm going to mix the coconut flour with some salt and some pepper. And then uh, for the coating on the outside, you will need some unsweetened shredded coconut. So I like to use um, paper plates sometimes when I'm breading things just because it's a lot easier and more convenient, but definitely a shallow dish when you're breading this shrimp is uh, helpful. So I took my shrimp. These were just kind of medium sized shrimp that I defrosted. I dipped them in the coconut flour, shook off the excess, then dipped them in the egg wash and then put them in the coconut. And I just make sure to uh, make sure that you pack the breading on really well, kind of pat it into the shrimp. And then I'm putting these in the basket of my air fryer. I sprayed the bottom of the basket with some nonstick cooking spray. Make sure that you do that or they will stick. And then once I get the shrimp in there, I'm also going to spray the top with some nonstick cooking spray as well. And this is a really great alternative to deep frying because it does make them really brown and crispy, but you don't have all that oil. So while those were cooking, I made the vinaigrette for these. It's just some cilantro, a little bit of maple syrup, some vinegar, salt and pepper, and oh, MG, you guys, this turned out so good. Definitely recommend that one. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna make some roasted veggies and pasta with some fish. So I'm starting out with a bag full of broccoli and zucchini that I had prepped earlier in the week that was already washed and cut up. I put some extra virgin olive oil in there, sprinkled some salt, some pepper, some garlic powder, and gave that a good toss. I'm going to put this out onto a baking tray that's lined with foil and roast these veggies in the oven. What I'm gonna end up doing is combining those with with some pasta for a side dish for our fish. For the marinade for the fish or the seasoned olive oil, I guess you would call it, I'm putting some olive oil in a bowl, some garlic, and then I'm going to add some smoked paprika along with some dill. It's a very interesting combination. And I think that I would probably make it again, but I would add more salt and pepper um, because I think it needed a little bit more seasoning, but I did add the juice of a lemon as well and then uh, whisk that up. And this is what I'm going to use to brush on the fish. So tonight I'm making some tilapia and I'm also making some salmon. Uh, my husband does not necessarily care for salmon, but he likes tilapia. So along with this, I did roast some portobello mushrooms I have those on a baking sheet with some olive oil. I season them with salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic powder. And then I just roasted those in the oven along with the fish. Um, no one in my house really likes them except for my husband, but that's fine. They make great leftovers as well. So here's the salmon. I just put that on a baking sheet and I'm just drizzling that olive oil mixture over the top. So this has the smoked paprika in it and the salt and pepper and the dill and the lemon juice. And then you can just roast this in the oven until it is complete. I also put some sliced lemons on top of the fish. I would recommend that. I think that it makes a great um, addition. And then here's the tilapia that I had. Same thing. You could use cod for this. You could use whatever kind of fish you have. Just um, poured that seasoned olive oil over the top with the lemon. This is a great low carb dish. Or if you're trying to do um, like Mediterranean diet, it would work for that as well. So in my pot here, I have some artichokes, some olives, and some cherry tomatoes. And I'm just sauteing these up 
up I put the roasted veggies in there and then I also put a little bit of pesto and I tossed this with some whole wheat spaghetti I did not yet have my Barilla red lentil pasta or I would have used that instead I think it would be great with this I'll link this recipe down below but that's what we had on this night was roasted veggie pasta and fish okay so next I'm going to share with you guys a sesame ginger beef patty recipe with some stir-fry veggies this turned out really really good um, I have half a pound of ground beef in my bowl along with some uh, sesame vinaigrette I'm also going to grate some ginger into there one tip I have is to keep your ginger in the freezer and you can just grate it on a microplane you don't have to peel it or anything it's super easy and then I'm mixing that together with a fork I also seasoned it with a little bit of salt and pepper um, the flavors of the sesame vinaigrette along with the beef was really really good it was definitely a great combination I don't necessarily have a recipe for this because I kind of just made it up on the fly so in a nonstick skillet I am adding some avocado oil you could also use olive oil and then I'm going to shape this uh, ground beef into two patties and put them into the skillet and saute them on about medium to medium high heat for about five minutes on each side um, I did end up cooking them a little bit more at the end so I was more just concerned with getting some color on the outside and then you might want to use some foil tented sort of over your pan too because beef does splatter when it's cooking especially if you're cooking it in a little bit of oil so uh, definitely keep that in mind I would love to hear from you guys do you guys have a splatter shield do they really work or are they just more of a mess I've never had one maybe I should consider investing in one while the beef is cooking I'm going to prep some fresh veggies so I just used whatever I had in my crisper drawer I have some red pepper scraps that I cut up and then some washed up broccoli I'm also going to put some chopped up onions in there some more ginger some uh, red cabbage basically I just kind of wanted to make a stir fry veggie mixture to have on the side of the beef patties so once the patties were browned on one side I'm just gonna give those a flip and then after they were done I wiped out the skillet put some sesame oil in there I added all of my veggies and seasoned that with some salt and pepper and then I just cooked those over medium heat for about five to ten minutes until they were tender and once those were um, mostly cooked through I kind of made a little well in the center of the skillet and I added my beef patties back in I had a little trouble with one it kind of fell apart but that's fine <laughs> it still tastes it still tastes good I put the chunks back in there so to the skillet I added the rest of the juices from the beef and then I'm also adding the rest of that sesame dressing and then I just put the foil back over this and let it simmer covered for about five minutes before I turn the heat off and this turned out so good I plated it and topped it with some uh, roasted salted cashews so Adam and I had this it was so good we had it for lunch on the weekend just the beef patty with the veggies and the cashews uh, very delicious and low carb all right guys so thank you so much for watching today's video I hope that you got some uh, dinner options for your family if you're planning on making any of these let me know uh, in the description box below don't forget that you guys can pick up some Barilla red lentil pasta with a coupon at box.com I'll have all of the information and the link in the description box below I'll have all of the recipes linked as well thank you guys so much and I'll see you tomorrow for another video bye